Yeah, I think uh, this paper uh, is basically on the main topics that of a lot of uh, research in molecular oncology, the integration of uh, biomarkers for uh, helping patient diagnosis and therapy. Basically, what this paper is saying, it's saying that uh, a protein coding gene uh, marker can be integrated with microRNAs, which are short non-coding RNA markers, in order to identify how the patient to breast cancer are uh, responding, responding to the treatment. This is on a larger topic that it's very hot now in molecular oncology, uh, topic of having cancer as a disease of coding genes and non-coding RNAs. Most uh, well studied are microRNAs and basically microRNAs are uh, one of the main topic of the conference that uh, it's organized these days in Basel. Yeah, basically, the concept is uh, non-coding RNA field is uh, very hot. There are uh, over uh, 10,000 papers on microRNAs each year and over 2,000 papers already on long non-coding RNA. The concept of this uh, journal is to try to attract very interesting papers uh, in the field to have a good impact factor and a lot of uh, citation. Of course, it's a big challenge in the new type of publishing where a lot of uh, journals who are uh, offering uh, space for publication, but I think with a very distinguished uh, set of uh, editorial board and with a lot of uh, good publications uh, in the next uh, uh, few years, the journal will survive to the competition and will be on the market uh, in publishing good work on uh, non-coding RNAs. Everybody who think has a good paper on this topic is welcome to send uh, to the journal, having in mind that uh, we are using a very, very uh, strict uh, review process, so the papers are accepted or rejected according to scientific merit. The first uh, clear-cut translation uh, come from uh, our studies uh, of uh, MIR 15 and 16. You remember, in 2002, George Calling and I found that in CLLs, the most uh, common and dominant uh, genetic alteration is the loss of two microRNA, MIR 15A and MIR 16 And uh, that was the first evidence uh, that uh, the non-coding genome can contribute to disease, in particular to cancer. Before 2002, when we published this paper, everybody was convinced that only oncogene and tumor suppressor gene were involved in cancer pathogenesis. In other words, genes that encode for protein. Our paper was the first evidence that the alteration in the non-coding genome can result in disease, in particular in cancer. That was a revolutionary discovery because uh, it indicated uh, that 90% that of the genome that was considered garbage is not garbage, not only is transcribed, but contribute to normal physiology and pathology. After that, we looked for target of uh, MIR 15 and 16. And we found that the crucial or critical target of this two microRNA is a gene that me, my lab discovered in a long time ago, in 1984, and I call it BCL2. And uh, therefore, it became clear from our result that loss of MIR 15 and 16 due predominantly to the lesion leads to overexpression of BCL2. But at the same time that this was going on, a, a company in the United States called Abbott developed small molecule inhibitors of BCL2. And after a, working on the molecule, it took a long time, they developed finally a molecule called venetoclax or uh, uh, ABT199. Now, this drug is dynamite. This drug can cause complete remission in patients with CLL, and the drug kills leukemic cells so fast that there is a crisis because 
uh, because most of the leukemic cells are die, uh, die. And therefore, we can start uh, using a little concentration of the drug and escalating it. And what is amazing of this drug, that in many of these cases, uh, there is no sign of minimal residual disease after treatment. Now, it took a long time. This drug was approved just last year, in April of 2016, while we made the discovery in 1984. So it took 32 years to go from the discovery of the gene to the de development of the drug that can be used and will save, I am sure, thousands of lives. Okay? So that indicates how the understanding of the non-coding genome can contribute not only to develop a very important biomarker to study the disease, but to develop drugs. And I'm sure, and we have plenty of evidence uh, that we have developed during the last few years of research, that we can go from dysregulation of specific microRNA to the development of a new drug and new therapeutic approaches. Now, microRNA and other non-coding RNA, like long non-coding RNA, can be used as very powerful biomarker. They can be used as powerful biomarker when they are expressed in the cell, in the cancer cell, for example, but also by looking at these biomarkers in the blood. And this is a very important issue because if we can detect aberrant expression of this biomarker in blood very early during the development of the disease, we might be able to cure the disease and eradicate the cancer when the tumor is not invasive and metastatic yet. Okay, so a lot of progress has been made because of the discovery of the involvement of non-coding RNA in human disease. This is a young field. Um, we're faced with an enormous challenge of understanding the structure and function of literally tens of thousands, if not more, of regulatory RNAs that appear to be overseeing the uh, trajectories of human development and uh, brain function. So the, the challenges within that new world are to to work out how the structure of these RNAs is affecting their function and also how mutations or variations in those sequences uh, give us predispositions to complex diseases like neuropsychiatric disorders and neurodegenerative disorders and cancer. I think um, we are embarked upon a huge endeavour. Uh, there are many, many of these RNAs to be analysed in terms of their biological function. We want to understand the principles and the way they work and the different uh, domains in which they work. And also the thing that excites me uh, most is the understanding the superimposition of plasticity on this system through RNA editing and modification, which I think the evidence points very clearly to saying that this is the fundamental platform for the evolution of cognition and brain function. You know, um, the 20th century was uh, often considered the second half uh, as being the uh, genesis of uh, modern molecular biology. It was really, it was the genesis, but, but it was just a warm up. This is the century of biology and medicine. And when we understand the non-coding RNA world, we'll understand human biology. Well, the most important aspect to consider in non-coding RNA research is the interplay between experimental data and informatic analysis. Uh, I think, and, and not just in, in, in non-coding RNA research, I think in science in general, it is essential that uh, practitioners, and particularly students coming into the field, know how to handle big data sets, are confident to commission big data analyses through genome sequencing and transcriptome sequencing, and also confident to do high throughput genome editing screens to look at the functions of these RNAs. So 
I think a new tool set is required. I think a new mindset is required. And I think new energy is required. So uh, I think the conference is a good mixture of different type of scientists involved in many aspects of RNA. RNA is a molecule between uh, DNA and proteins, but the RNA itself, it does many, many things, it has many functions. And here there is, uh, I would say, a good mixture of scientists studying in detail the basic mechanism of what is doing RNA, the ribonucleic acid, and what are alterations in, in disease, for example. In, in our case, for example, we are studying how epigenetics, how chemical modifications are able to alter the expression of non-coding RNAs in cancer cells. It is known that, for example, that there are several tumor suppressors that they act against cancer. The cancer cells, they select the loss. There is a, a loss of function of these RNAs and this promotes the, the growth of tumor cells. The good news about this is that uh, we can detect this. It can be used like biomarkers of the progression of the disease. And maybe, why not, thinking about therapies that are directed to, to RNA. RNA itself, or just to erase the chemical marks that silence these RNAs. So it's another um, tool that can be used in, in the better management of, of cancer patients. Uh, my name is uh, Menashe Barelli. I came here from MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Uh, it's the biggest uh, hospital to treat cancer patients in the United States. And personally, I work on the, the um, progression of uh, melanoma and uh, studying what makes melanoma to metastasize. And for many years, we were concentrating on transcriptional regulation of genes, but uh, recently we realized that there is another layer of uh, controlling uh, gene expression, and this is the microRNA, and this is what this meeting is concentrating about. Uh, what I like about this meeting is because they, they invited uh, uh, scientists from different disciplines to talk about uh, these subjects, uh, from how uh, microRNA regulating genes, uh, their heterogeneity, uh, and uh, mostly how um, uh, mutations within the uh, microRNA can affect the target genes and contributing uh, to uh, diseases such as melanoma. For example, we found that uh, in, in melanoma, the, the static melanoma cells are lacking an enzyme that can uh, regulate uh, editing of the RNA and the, R, the R, editing of the microRNA can really affect uh, the target genes, hence contributing to the metastatic phenotype of melanoma. Overall, this is a, a wonderful meeting. They assembled a fantastic group of scientists and speakers to talk about several aspects of how microRNA regulating diseases. This field has been developing for a number of years, maybe the past uh, 15 or 20 years. And it's been very interesting to see the different stages of the development of uh, these non-coding RNAs in, uh, in disease, where initially there was a great deal of interest in uh, profiling the different uh, microRNAs and non-coding RNAs. And then that's led into various translational applications, including the use of these RNAs as uh, diagnostic biomarkers as well as uh, therapeutics. Um, I think the biggest challenge right now is to see if we can, in fact, develop these in terms of therapeutics, because that's ultimately what we want to do in tr cancer and other diseases, to be able to treat uh, the disease with um, the therapeutic. And there's really two different ways that can be done with, um, with the microRNAs. One would be to um, in the cancer, there's one of two situations. Either the microRNAs are reduced in the tumor compared to normal, or they're increased in the tumor relative to normal. So in the case, uh, and, and both of them can be causative or contribute to the uh, causation of the cancer. So in the case when the, can the, the microRNA genes are reduced in the tumor, we would then um, add those back in the form of something called a microRNA mimic. And um, in the case of they're overexpressed, we'd want to inhibit them with something called an antimere. 
Uh, there's still a lot of challenges in this in the in the delivery of this um, uh, of these therapeutics, and I think one of the big uh, exciting uh, something that's very exciting on the horizon is the use of these uh, exosomes or uh, extracellular vesicles to deliver the therapeutic oligonucleotide to treat the cancer. Oh, this is a really great uh, conference about uh, non-coding RNA, which is becoming a very hot topic uh, on many aspects of research and uh, translational application. And uh, I think uh, it's a very good uh, uh, reunion on this uh, topic uh, of many, many scientists uh, that work on that. And uh, it, was, uh, it was very interesting and it was fun. The field in which we are working is on uh, the use of uh, short RNA in therapeutics, cancer, cancer therapeutics, which is uh, a new field that uh, is promising to give important uh, results uh, for the uh, therapeutic of cancers. We have uh, 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 produced already, we and many other teams uh, produced already uh, data that shows that even this small RNA, 20 nucleotides, can improve uh, 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 cancer uh, 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 therapeutics. So I think this is a very important field uh, and it's an application that uh, when we started and this field started about uh, 10 to 15 years ago, nobody could uh, even imagine. It's uh, my first time participating in this conference. It's very exciting. A lot of new things uh, are being discussed. Uh, many things are unpublished. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, event. Uh, certainly, uh, I work on two types of uh, short non-coding RNAs, uh, the tRNA fragments and the microRNA isoforms, these are uh, non-coding RNAs that regulate the expression of proteins. I, I found the con conference very exciting because it just adds even more excitement to the non-coding RNAs and RNA in general in regulation of gene expression. I've been working in, on different aspects of RNA for nearly 50 years and last two, three decades demonstrated that RNA not only functions as a major template for protein synthesis, but also functions as a regulatory RNA, as a short or very short uh, RNA like microRNAs or intermediate length or long RNAs. So I, uh, I'm exciting, excited to find out that this field is really very dynamic and new discoveries are made almost almost daily and there, it looks like there will be no stop to that because there's so many of these non-coding regulatory RNAs that it will take us probably uh, decades uh, to decipher their function. In a way we have a, a problem like dissecting a second human or mammalian genome because protein coding genome that was one thing. We understand quite quite a lot about it, but very little about the function of non-coding RNAs. And uh, seeing the progress also presented at this meeting, which also links non-coding RNAs to disease, in particular to cancer. And this is another uh, reason people are excited about non-coding RNAs, because many of them are demonstrated to be cause or uh, associated with disease, not necessarily with uh, causative uh, demonstration, but uh, another important thing is that one is talking more and more about therapeutic use of this non-coding RNAs or their analogs 
in different human diseases. And I'm sure, of course, it will take another decade, uh, decade to uh, demonstrate utility of these therapeutic approaches, but I'm quite confident that they will eventually uh, show up. Yeah. It's really a, a great pleasure to have all these uh, outstanding people uh, speaking at the conference. Um, these are really pioneers uh, in cancer biology. We know that non collinearity are very important for uh, for development, for uh, for many aspects of uh, of development. So this conference is is, is very is very interesting. Uh, for MDPI, for IGMS, for the journals uh, in uh, in the company, it's it's uh, it's a really it's a really good conference. We are uh, partnering and we have uh, relations with with uh, very important uh, scientists, so it's uh, it's really good. So we are very happy that uh, that people uh, of this uh, standing came uh, for our first uh, conference on this topic, and we hope uh, this conference will uh, will develop further in the future.